We have some Apple news and a lager. Let's get into it. Welcome back to the channel. So today we have our Friday, Saturday, whatever you want to call it, podcast about Apple news, where I kind of showcase one beer at the very beginning for about 30 seconds. So I'm going to go ahead and showcase the beer, and then I go through about 20, 30 stories of Apple news stories coming up here. Sit back and relax. Enjoy your Friday or Saturday. Let's get into it. All right, just really quickly, today what do I have? I have Cold Time. It's by Revolution Brewing. It's another Chicago brewery here. If the can looks like that, it might look a little different on the other side because it's baby blue over there. But this is actually a lager. It's one of my favorite. It's 4.8% alcohol. It's really, really smooth. If you like lagers, if you look over at the screen over here, it's an American. It's, it's rated as, what is it, number nine out of all American lagers. And you can see in here, I love the description of it. Made with pure water from the Great Lakes. I don't know if that's good. Midwest two-row barley, Mexican lager yeast, and a touch of German hops before brewed low and slow. So anyways, if you guys like kind of a lager, sit back and relax. Let's get into the Apple news. I'll be drinking this throughout the news. Let's get into it. Let's kick off the Apple news with actually a sale from Apple. It's actually from Amazon. Take a look at this. You tell me if this is good. 2021 Apple MacBook Pro with the M1 Max, MAX chip. So it's a Max chip, 16 gigs, 32 gigs of RAM, one terabyte SSD or storage on this, 2183. Now this is actually just a renewed, so it's a renewed computer, it's not new, from Amazon. I had a video earlier saying, kind of don't buy the renewed unless you look at the reviews very closely, always buy renewed premium. But if you look down here, the reviews look pretty good on this, so take take your own shot at it if you want. You can always return it. That's, I think that's a great deal for $2,100 for a Max chip, even though it's the M1, and you still get the full terabyte and 32 gigs of storage, or 32 gigs of RAM. Duh. All right, this next story I thought was interesting. It says, Apple's iOS 18 AI will be all on-device preserving privacy and not server-side. How is this even possible? But it's, it's really not. So it says Apple's push to OS 18, rumored to focus on privacy with processing done directly on the iPhone. It won't connect to cloud servers, supposedly. Over the past few months, it says, you know, the artificial intelligence features that are introducing to iOS 18. It says, according to Mark, Mark Gurman again, writing this section of his weekly Power On newsletter, that the initial AI features will pl plan to debut with iOS 18 will work re entirely on device. In this practice, these AI features would be available to function without an internet connection of any form or, you know, basically any form of cloud processing. That seems almost impossible. And it probably is because down here it says, while more advanced features will ultimately require the internet connection, basic text analysis and response generation features should be available offline. So if you're thinking about it, that's actually kind of good, I guess, to begin with. It's not going to be always accessing the internet for privacy and safety. But again, it's just going to probably pick and choose certain functions there. It's not all of them. I know it's kind of a weird story, but I thought it was interesting. I thought this next story was actually really interesting just because of Apple's dominance with the iPhone. They're losing it a little bit. It says iPhone sales drop 10% as Samsung studies and Chinese rivals grow. So the chart down here is what tells the kind of the tail of the tape here. Here's Apple over here. It's going down this way. It used to be about 25%, now down to about 18%. It says worldwide top five smartphone companies. Here's Samsung here. It used to be right here about 16, 17%. Now it's up to 21%. So it overtook Apple. And you can see the other manufacturers down here, right here. I thought Apple was pretty interesting. That that's, what is that, a fifth biggest one in the world? Kind of crazy what Chinese, you know, those companies are doing out there. Long story short, though, you know, it is what it is. Apple lost that kind of dominance there. But overall, I still think they're selling a ton of iPhones. If you like a good lager, definitely check that out. All right. It says the 12.9 inch iPad Air now rumored to feature mini LED displays. So coming out here probably within the month or so, it says the rumored 12.9 inch the Air basically is expected to be announced in May will be equipped with an LED mini LED display like the current 12.9 inch iPad Pro. So it's going to be basically matching that Pro. So it's going to give it better contrast, you know, maybe brighter brights and stuff like that. But it's not all good news. They, were, they went on to say in the article that it's good news from the standpoint you're going to get that. But from the standpoint of the price point, that could actually go up a bit just because of it. So you got to weigh, you know, what you want. Obviously, if you want the, I think it's a 10 point whatever inch, the cheaper model, that's going to stay with the LED, you know, obviously screen. But for this one, the price may actually just jump up a little bit just because of the screen and the technology is changing. All right, if you're looking for kind of like a burner phone or something, whatever reason, I don't even ask questions. Take a look over here. It says Woot. This is owned by Amazon too, but they have a sale going on now until the end of the month. And you can buy all these like kind of, uh, they're just basically refurbished, grade A refurbished phones, iPhones. And I thought it was interesting. I might be looking at over here. Look at this. So there's a whole bunch in here. I mean, obviously the 13 Pro Max from 529 
13 Pro from 379, all grade A. But I like this one over here. Take a look at this. This is going to be the Apple iPhone 12 mini. So I always want a kind of a small phone to travel with. Look at this pricing. I mean, you can get it here like, in, let me just see here, blue. And let me go up to 128 gigs of RAM. 239 right there. Obviously, it doesn't show the blue for some reason. There's the blue there. But if you want this phone and want a teeny little phone for some cases, maybe you're going on a trip or something, you don't want to carry a bigger phone, this is actually a good deal for an iPhone. Still going to perform perfect. What does it have in here? The A14 Bionic chip, so it's really fast. Really good deals here on Woot until the end of the month. This next one I never understood. Why is Apple's calculator so bad? Well, it's going to be going through some improvements, kind of. So it says Apple's Mac OS 15 to get basically a boost via Project Gray Parrot. I guess Gray Parrots are kind of smart, so that's why they use that. I don't know. Anyways, long story short, you can see it here. Obviously, it just doesn't have a lot of features, but they're saying it's going to be redesigned. Look at this. If I go down to the, to the calculator now, you can see that the buttons are square here. They're going on to say that they're going to make them circle. Is that a big deal? I mean, think about that for a second, going from square to circle. That's not the biggest problem with the calculator, number one. But the other good features that are coming with it is going to be over here. It's going to provide a ticker now so you can actually see some of the history that you've actually calculated before. You can see it in this picture. That's an added change that's really good. And some other features, you can read about it. It's going to be doing some other kind of, it's going to work. They're going to integrate it, obviously, with notes. I'll get into that in a second. But it's going to be integrated with notes as well so you can do mathematical formulas inside of notes. That's another kind of upgrade to it. But overall, the design is very similar. I actually use a calculator down here. I don't even know what it's called, if I can even find it here. Calculator smart. Here it is. Let's just see if it comes up here. I don't know why it's not coming up. I just loaded that one on this, this Mac. This is a newer Mac. So here it is right here. And you can see it in here. So it's basically the same, but it just works a little bit more responsive than the other one. It also has, a, I think it has a ticker and stuff. That's the one I use. So I don't even use the Apple calculator because it's so bad. You guys tell me, do you guys use it? Um, is it something that you use a lot or do you guys download third parties? If you do download third parties, tell me what it is. All right, this next one I thought was pretty interesting only because they always try to get you on costs and their cost keeps going up. It says Comcast, this is not really an Apple story, but it's kind of related. Comcast launches now an affordable home internet mobile plans and more. So think about this. I didn't even know this was coming. So basically they're, they're kind of coming out with this low cost now internet service. And this is Comcast. And these are the services right here. It says internet, it says customers will be able to choose between two prepaid options, 100 megabytes per second for 30 bucks a month, 200 megabytes per second for 45 bucks a month flat out. That's actually pretty good. It includes unlimited data, which is actually pretty awesome. Then they got the mobile here, which is $25 a line and will be the only prepaid wireless option that connects customers to more than 23 million Xfinity hotspots, but supposedly it's unlimited talk and text. And then now TV, it's got 40 different channels and 2000 fast uh, integrated fast channels like Peacock Premium, $20 a month if you want that added on. And then Wi-Fi pass down here. Don't worry about that. But it says, Comcast says that now in the now internet and mobile plans are currently available in a limited, oh, in the limited areas of Hartford, Houston, and Miami with a full launch nationwide coming in weeks. I didn't even see that. So it's not even out yet for everybody, but in a couple weeks it will be. So you can change, maybe get off your phone or your, if you don't want your TV anymore, get rid of that, get this for 40 bucks a month. It'll be actually save you quite a bit of money. All right, the next article is just kind of on safety. And when you get rid of your old devices, let's say you give them back to Apple, you expect them to be kind of removed. You know, if, you, if they say they're going to recycle them, you expect that, right? Especially you don't want people kind of trying to get your data out of there and stuff. Here it says 100,000 iPhone stolen instead of scrapped, Apple accused of shredding usable devices. So this, this basically story goes on to say almost 100,000 iPhones, which Apple paid a contractor to scrap, were instead stolen and shipped it off to China to reuse. Think about that. This is Apple, too. It's not like a third-party company. So Apple, I guess, dropped the lawsuit. First they sued them, but then they dropped it because then you know people were saying, well, why are you, why are you shredding usable iPhones anyway? because that's kind of you know not good for the environment and Apple doesn't want to deal with that. So long story short, it's kind of a weird quagmire here, but at the end of the day, you know, your data might be, someone might be using your phone in China as the end of the, you know, that's, that's, that's the bottom line. So I always keep my phones in most cases. Sometimes I trade them. I did trade a computer, which worries me a little bit as well, but you have to do what you have to do to survive. All right, finally, this next story is kind of interesting just because we always complain about the, the kind of the key tabs, on, especially on these MacBooks, especially this M2 over here. So this thing's actually, you know, it's like an oily fingerprint magnet on the keys, which is weird. So over here it says Apple wants to make groove keys to stop nasty finger oil transfers to the MacBook Pro screens. Now, they're talking more about when you actually put your Mac like this down into clamshell mode, you kind of get these lines on your screen where the keys touch it and it leaves marks. You kind of kind of rub it off, but some of the old Macs have really bad, you know, lines on them. 
one. And you, you guys know what I'm talking about. The keys touch the screen. They're saying that with these grooves, these groove kind of keys, it, all the oil and stuff goes into these grooves and it doesn't make it as much as a, you know, is an issue. But it also says it limits kind of the look and feel of the oil generating on the keys as well. Overall, that's kind of what they're doing here. I thought maybe they would fix just the structure of the keys as far as what they make them out of so that that doesn't show as much oil and stuff on the black keys. But you get the idea. This is what they're doing. What can you do? I mean, it looks like it's a patent coming out, but there's no like good idea of when it's coming. Here's another sale. If you look over here, tell me if this is good. Apple 2023. So this is the M3 Pro chip right here. And what does it have? It's basically the base model. 18 gigs of RAM, 512 SSD. Now it's on Amazon, 200 bucks off right now. Usually 19.99, 17.99. I guess this is a fair price. This is about where the best deal you can get right now. I've seen it maybe for 17.50. That's the lowest ever, and especially the M3. But the M3 is pretty good at 17.99 for the base model. Pro chip, obviously, 14 inch. So pick one up on Amazon. I'll have links to this in the description. All right, these next two stories are actually just fun stories from Apple. Let me just take a quick sip. This is super smooth. If you're looking for a good lager, definitely check this out. I'm not affiliated. I just, just love that beer. So it says today in Apple history. And it's not today because I did this a couple days ago. Apple One starts a revolution. This is 1976, April 11th. It says designed and handled by Steve Wozniak. The computers are sold wholesale by Stephen Jobs. To finance, to finance their manufacturing, Wisnack sells his HP 65 calculator for 500 bucks. $500 calculator, and Jobs sells his Volkswagen van. Crazy, right? So then it says Apple One's first computer. This is crazy. It says it has one megahertz, not gigahertz, one megahertz uh, CPU, four kilobytes of RAM, not megabytes, four kilobytes of memory standard, upgradable to eight or 48, obviously, here. So he, Wozniak started working on the computer as a hobby. So then he went into this homebrew computer club and to show people at homebrew that this was possible to build a very affordable computer, that's what he wanted to do. Jobs convinced him that they'd do better selling Apple One rather than giving it away the designs. That's kind of how Apple started. And then they got this guy, Terrell, rejected Jobs' first suggestion that Apple One should come in a kit form. He told Jobs that computers, you know, people want to buy fully assembled machines. That's what they did. So down here, they they were going to sell for 500 bucks, but for some reason, Steve Jobs made it 666.66, which is weird because isn't that the sign of the devil or something? I don't know why he did that, but they only sold 200 or so, and that one sold for almost a million dollars you know, in 2014. Crazy. And then the next one here is kind of another funny one. So today in Apple history, this was back in April 12th, the next day, 1976, right? Let me just make sure that's possible. This is 1970. Yeah, the next day. This guy, Apple co-founder, quits and cashes in his stake for 800 bucks. This is a crazy story. So this guy, um, let me just see here. Tyree Colleague and Steve Wozniak named Ron, his friend, basically Ron, Ron Wayne, cashes in his Apple shares for 800 bucks. Wayne, who owns 10% stake in the company, throws in the towel after worrying he, that he doesn't have enough time or energy properly to invest in Apple. He later receives an extra $1,500 check to seal the deal. When he cashes it in, he loses out on an investment that could have been worth billions, probably hundreds of billions if you think about it. He was 40, he says, and these were kids in their 20s. And he said he didn't basically, these were whirlwinds. It was like having a tiger by the tail. If I had stayed with Apple, I probably would have wound up the richest man in the, in the cemetery. So he's saying basically he was too old to do this and he just didn't want the money. But I mean, geez, that's so much money. He would just quit for 800 bucks and he was one of the three people that owned Apple. All right, the next story is from 9to5Mac. It also says Riley Testoot launches Delta Game Emulator on Mac App Store for everyone, Alt Store Marketplace for EU. So if you like kind of Nintendo games and stuff, finally Apple's allowing these emulators. They're saying that it's legal to do that on the App Store, but it's not legal to download the, the ROMs, which obviously you have to do to get the games. But it says in here, if I scroll down, it says it's going to have supported game systems, Nintendo Entertainment System, Super Nintendo, Nintendo 64, Game Boy, Nintendo DS, you name it, all this stuff, PS4, Xbox One. I mean, all these different things are going to be allowed on here now as far as the ROMs. So it looks like, I mean, it's, it's who knows what's happening here. I just think, you know, there's been a lot of lawsuits and stuff. We're going to see a lot of this stuff come through, you know, through the pipeline in, in the next couple of months because it's just brand new for, for Apple allowing this stuff. So we'll see how it shakes out. I think there's going to be some winners and losers. But overall, I mean, you can probably download, get this right now and actually start playing Nintendo games, which is crazy. All right, the next story is one of the stories I always touch on. It's always about China. Here we go again. It says, Apple pulls WhatsApp and threads from App Store in China. 
I'm not sure why they're doing that. Why are they doing that? It says Apple has removed the Meta app from the Chinese store at the request of the Chinese government. Both WhatsApp and Threads have been unavailable in the app store, preventing new installs for the messaging and social apps. So I guess that's what you get when you deal with different countries and stuff. I guess almost a lot of countries do the same thing, but unfortunately they're removing, looks like WhatsApp and Threads. So they're slowly kind of removing all these mainstream apps so that everything can be more government controlled. We can't let that happen here, but it's happening in a lot of places around the world. The next one's interesting if you actually have an iPhone or you're thinking about buying one. It says iPhone 16 Pro, four new camera features coming this year. So number one here, it says upgraded ultra wide camera. So it says multiple reports are stating that the iPhone 16 Pro and iPhone 16 Pro Max will be upgraded the ultra camera from 48 megapixels from the current 12 megapixels. So a big upgrade as far as megapixels, whatever that's worth. Then it says expanded optical zoom here. So it says, you know, currently the iPhone 15 Pro Max uses a, a new camera design that unlocks five times optical and 25 digital zoom. With the iPhone 16, however, Apple will expand the upgraded camera to smaller iPhone 16 Pro as well. This means that the iPhone 16 Pro and the Pro Max will both get five and 25 times digital. So for all it's worth, that's gonna be going on. Here's a big one, anti-reflective coating. This is the third thing. So the problem with a lot of iPhones is you get those lens flares. I guess they're putting some kind of protective coating on the lens now, preventing that from happening on these new, in the iPhone 16s. We'll see if that works when you're taking a picture near the sun. So hopefully that'll work pretty good. And then an upgraded main camera. Finally, the iPhone 16 Pro will reportedly get a new camera sensor from Sony with the upgraded design for better low light performance as well. It says it's not sure if it's gonna be added to some of the other ones as well, but that's all they know right now. So some good upgrades for the iPhone 16. All right, this next one is kind of about AI again, but it's interesting. So, you know, Photoshop, if you use Photoshop, they have an, a generative AI, which basically means that if you take a photo, it can remove like this monitor right here and just replace the background. I can add different things in the background. It does it all through AI. And everyone I think has heard of that feature on Photoshop. Now, the problem is, is you can't trust photos. Long story short, it only took them a few short months and now they're doing it here. Adobe Generative AI video tools are coming soon to Premiere Pro. So it's coming to a video editing software now. So take a look at this picture. So let's say you have a guy walking and the camera's gonna be obviously zooming or panning. You can remove objects from the actual videos now. Not just the photos, but the moving videos. It's getting that good. So now you can't trust videos either. So if you're talking to someone, maybe there's a crowd behind them and you remove the crowd, is that really reality? No, it's just something that's fake. You can you can really fake a lot of stuff, which worries me. Overall, though, it's now coming to Premiere. All right, so this next sale, um, let me just see here. If this is actually a good sale, I have no idea. But first of all, I need one more sip of this. All right, Apple 2024 MacBook Air 15 inch with M3 chip. So this is eight gigs of memory, 256. So this is the base model, but they have a good sale here. It's usually 12.99, now 11.99, so 100 bucks off the M3 15 inch MacBook Air. You're not gonna get tons of good sales on this. 100 bucks off, though, is not bad for the new chips coming out. I think I've seen this, the cheapest I think I've seen this ever was about 1150, somewhere in that range, or 1149. But still, if you're looking for it, and you, you know, you just, I wouldn't wait for the M4s. It's gonna be a wild thing. It's gonna probably take a long time for those to come out. I know I just did a video on that, but it's gonna be later this year. And you know, who knows if that's even, you know, we just gotta trust they know what they're talking about, some of the rumor people. So I would just pick this up if you need one. These are great machines, but maybe get 16 gigs of RAM. All right, Apple's got a new patent that's coming out about a MagSafe wallet here. And you can see a smart wallet. So it tells you if you leave your card somewhere. So I guess you put four, it can hold like four cards. It's got little slots. And then if you don't put it back enough time, let's say, you know, 10 minutes go by, it'll say, hey, you've lost your card. Now, in theory, I think this is great. You're engineering this. This is going to help people. But at the end of the day, like I always say, are people getting this dumb? I mean, literally, I understand that it could help you. And I understand that. That's not a problem. But at the end of the day, do people need to be hand-fed everything? If they can't remember the card, getting it back from the person, then the card's gone. And you learn the next time. Let's say someone takes the card, goes out and does a shopping spree. The next time you think a little harder to get your card back. I think that we're making people so dumbed down by doing all this technology. That's my take on it. But some people may love it. I, I just don't think you need it because it's going to be probably like 100 bucks or 124 bucks or something. It's just not worth it. All right, so if you're hoping that in this next year that Apple's gonna be doing 16 gigs of RAM on the base model, I think you're kind of probably mistaken. And this is kind of worries me. It says, Apple's, this is by uh, Apple Insider, gaming and AI are max future, even with low memory capacities. So it's funny, it goes on to say, Apple's continuing to assist that users can still get a lot of work done with eight gigs of RAM. 
And, uh, you know, this stuff, it says, in November, Apple's VP of Worldwide Product Marketing, Bob Borchers, defended Mac's, Mac's selling with 8 gigs of memory, insisting that the design improvements make 8 gigs useful as 16 gigs on a PC. Then it says, months later, the chiefs at the company are continuing continuing to insist that the small, beautiful, at least, you know, small is beautiful, at least in terms of memory capacity. So, you know, they're still saying it and they're still going to do it. I think it's going to be another year, another year and a half until we get to the 16 gigs or at least 12 on the base models. I have no idea how they're holding on this long, especially when they charge this much, but they're doing it and it looks bad for the next year. All right, for all it's worth, if you got a Samsung phone, it's a little bit faster than Apple as far as Wi-Fi. They did some more testing. It says iPhone 15 slower than Samsung Galaxy S24 only. So down here, you can see these charts in the United States here. It's very small, but it's 306 megabytes per second on the Samsung 24 Galaxy. Here's the Apple one, 272. There's, I guess, a big difference there. Not really. <laughs> you wouldn't notice it. But on the uploads, maybe 15 to 18 there. Then down in Hong Kong, you got 165 to 151 as far as the, the downloads. And then on the uploads, you know, it's about, what is that, 6 megabytes per second. So when you're getting into upload speed, you know, 6 or 7 megabytes makes a difference when you're only up to 20. On the downloads, it's not going to make a big difference. But overall, it's not that big of a difference. And actually, Apple beats all the other Galaxy S23, S22. So take it with the grain of salt again. They got a little bit faster. But in the scheme of things, I'm not sure it really matters unless you're uploading a ton of stuff. All right, we're just going to wrap this up with one last story here. This is DuckDuckGo launches a three-in-one privacy pro subscription with VPN and personal data. So if you're a fan of DuckDuckGo, I recommend using it. They're a great kind of you know, system to use um, for security. Obviously, they don't track any of your information. Their ads are limited. But here they have, it says DuckDuckGo Privacy Pro. You get the VPN, you get a personal information removal, and you get identity theft restoration. So they basically do a whole bunch of stuff for you. And I think it's around $9.99 a month. And uh, obviously, like a VPN would usually cost maybe $5 a month, but they do do this other stuff where they're constantly checking for your information to see if it's out there, and then they report back if they do, and then if they do find it, they work with you to get rid of that information so that you're kind of clean, the slate is clean. Overall, you have to do your own research on it. It is down here, so it's $9.99 a month or 100 bucks a year. Take it with a grain of salt, but I do like this company because they don't do a lot of that tracking and stuff, and I recommend supporting them. They're a pretty good, you know, pretty good company to work with. All right, so we're going to wrap this up. So I hope you like this kind of Friday, Saturday night podcast. I am going to, like I said, do this live. It's going to be a lot funner live. I mean, I'm going to have a beer. And we're going to, it's kind of hard to do this by myself like this. But on you know, Saturday, Fridays, I might do a live one coming up. I might send out like an, an announcement or something, and then people can, you know, I'll let them know it's coming, and then hopefully we'll get at least a few people on it. We'll try to build that up. Then we can do questions in real time, live stuff. I got to learn a little bit better how to use the live streaming and stuff because I just don't use it that much. But overall, once I get used to it and stuff, we're going to start these live. Subscribe if you can. We'll talk to you in the next couple days here. I do videos every two or three days. Peace.